Hello and welcome back, and if you are new here, welcome, we are very glad to have you here. In today's video, we will continue our demonstration from previous video. In previous video we've addressed the issue of signal display stabilization. In this video we will demonstrate how to center signal display, and we will also briefly mention difference between AC and DC signals. So, let's get to business. As mentioned before, the purpose of the oscilloscope is to enable us to visualize electric signals. Now, there are a couple of reasons for this. Some of them are, we want to see the result of our own intervention, for example, we want to see the shape of signal after amplification, or we are doing diagnostics, and we want to see, at certain points in our electrical circuit, what is the shape of the signal, or even, if signal exists. Or, maybe sometimes, we will find ourselves in situation where we will not know the origin of the signal, and we need to learn more about it, see its shape, measure its period, frequency, point-to-point -point voltage, duty cycle, and so on. Before moving on with demonstration, let's fulfill our promise and tackle the issue of AC and DC signals. Now, this is one of those unfortunate things in life, that is so poorly named, that confuses everyone who has ever had a misfortune of trying to comprehend what is AC and DC signal, and what is the difference between two. First, AC stands for alternating current, and it mainly refers to power source that provides alternating current in circuit. Your household is supplied with electric power produced in power plants, containing alternating current of certain voltage, 110 or 230 volts, depending of where you live. That current shifts its direction in electric circuit 50 or 60 times in one second, thus the phrase 50 or 60 Hz power supply. Visually, it's usually represented by a sine wave. Positive part of sine wave indicates current flowing in one direction in circuit, and negative part of sine wave indicates current flowing in the opposite direction in circuit. Since the change of direction occurs 50 or 60 times in second, we are pretty unaware of this, and our light bulb and lamp or chandelier, continues to shine brightly, and interrupt it, regardless of current shift. On the other hand, DC stands for direct current, and it mainly refers to power source that provides constant flow of current of certain voltage, that always keeps one direction in electric circuit, uninterrupted, unchanged. The most obvious example of this power source is common battery. So, how does this relate to our signals? Well, this is the part where that unfortunate naming comes in play. Having in mind what has been previously said, one would logically conclude that AC signal shifts its flow in circuit 50 or 60 times in one second, and that DC signal constantly flows through electrical circuit in one direction. Right? Wrong. Actually, there are no DC signals, and all signals, whether they are sine, square, triangle or saw, are AC signals by their nature. But where does the alternating part come in the picture? In this particular scenario, alternating here means change in value of current, not in direction. Let's assemble a simple circuit to demonstrate this. Let's assume that we have square signal of unknown origin. Usually, we would run our signal into an amplifier, through input resistor. This is the most common amplifier layout. If we take a multimeter and set it to measure the amount of current running through input resistor, we would observe that in period of time marked T1, the current running through input resistor is zero. At period of time marked T2, the current running through input resistor would be at some certain value, depending a value of the input resistor, and point-to-point -point voltage of the signal, it would be very small in value, but not zero, and this would repeat as long as there is input signal present in the circuit. This periodical change in value of the current at input resistor, is what makes the signal alternating in current, although, we repeat again, this is very poor choice in naming. If the value of current at input resistor changes periodically throughout time, while input signal is present, we call that signal AC.
On the other hand, if the value of current at input resistor does not change in time, while the input signal is present, that does not mean that the signal is DC in nature. It only means that, there is something woefully wrong in your circuit. If you insist, the only example of DC signal would be output from battery, of certain voltage, but that would not be considered signal, only, just the output from power source. At this point, you might ask, but what is the purpose of that top right CPL switch in our oscilloscope, if there are no DC signals? It has three positions, GND, AC, and DC. Again, accumulating on previously bad naming convention, this is outcome of piling up the errors in naming things. In this case AC or DC doesn't mean switching mode of work of the oscilloscope to receive AC or DC signal. The purpose of this selector is to eliminate signal's DC offset. We will shortly explain what that is. In serious books dealing with signals in electronic, signal is never displayed in coordinate system. If any, the only information given is its point-to-point -point voltage, and sometimes frequency. That is done because the point-to-point -point value property of the signal is relative number, derived as a result of subtraction operation between two values, highest and lowest potential point of the signal. For example, point-to-point -point value of 1 volt, can be result of subtraction between values of two points, with potentials of 1 and 0 volts, or can be a result of subtraction between values of two points, with potentials 10 and 9 volts, respectively. Unless we reference our signal, to the point in circuit with known potential value, for example ground, or earth zero ground, point-to-point -point value of the signal is abstract. When we reference our signal to ground point in circuit, we can then place our signal in coordinate system. Now there are two scenarios. The first one, is that our AC signal is perfectly symmetrical in respect to horizontal axis. In this case we say that signal has no DC offset. The second scenario is that our signal can be positioned above, or below the horizontal axis, in part, or in full. Amount of the shift from imagined center line of the signal, in respect to horizontal axis is called DC offset. DC offset is value expressed in volts. Back to our oscilloscope and CPL switch. The purpose of the switch is to filter out DC offset from the input signal. When selector is at GND position, the entire signal is piped to ground line of the oscilloscope. Next, when selector is at AC position, signal is piped through capacitor filter, that will eliminate any DC offset. Most likely, the signal will be displayed in the center of the oscilloscope. And at last, when selector is at DC position, the signal is piped, and displayed, without any filtering, meaning the signal will be displayed with both AC and DC component, provided that DC offset exists. The signal will most likely shift up or down, in regard to centerline of the oscilloscope's display, if DC offset is present. Now, let's put all this knowledge into work. Our goal is by using two functions of the oscilloscope, to perfectly center signal, in regard to display center. For this purpose, we will make use of arrow pointer on left hand side of the screen, to center the signal vertically, and horizontal slider, at top of the screen, to center the signal horizontally. Horizontal adjustment is available only on original version of DSO-138 oscilloscope. First, let's begin by centering our signal vertically. Initially, for this purpose, we will power up our oscilloscope, but we will not provide any input signal. Our goal is to center display with no input signal present. We will do so by pressing select push button to put focus on left hand arrow pointer. When focus is on arrow pointer, push OK button for 2 seconds. 
This will automatically position arrow pointer in center regarding no signal line. If you have paused display, press OK button once more, and display will resume in selected mode of work. Now, by using plus and minus push button, drive line up or down, until it is perfectly centered on the screen. If necessary, use magnifying glass to do so. Next step is to repeat the same procedure as before, but this time, with signal provided to our oscilloscope. So, let's provide a square signal and power our oscilloscope. If the signal doesn't have a DC offset, probably no further adjustments will be necessary. But, just in case, let's recenter our signal, by again, putting focus on left hand arrow pointer, and then pushing OK button for 2 seconds to center the arrow in regard to input signal. Again, by using plus and minus push buttons, drive the imaginary center line of the signal to adjust to the center line of display. These steps conclude our vertical alignment of the signal. Now, before we proceed to demonstrate how to adjust and center signal horizontally, it is necessary to stabilize signal display by using trigged function of the oscilloscope. Please watch previous video, where we have provided a step-by-step -step instruction how to stabilize signal display. At this point, you might ask, why would it be necessary to horizontally move or adjust signal? One good reason would be a laboratory practice, where you need to determine period and duty cycle of the signal on your own. Although, the internal mechanism of the oscilloscope itself provide this information, you might consider it a good practice to test yourself if you have become familiar with time division and multiplier functions of the oscilloscope. You might want to try to calculate period and duty cycle of signal and compare it with information provided by the oscilloscope, and perhaps, calculate the error and other metrological parameters of your exercise. To horizontally adjust signal, set focus on horizontal slider at top of the screen, by pushing select button. Then, using plus and minus push buttons, move signal left or right until one slope of signal, whether rising or falling, comes aligned with vertical axis of the screen. Now, this procedure is available only if you are using original DSO-138 oscilloscope. In this and previous video, we have demonstrated how to fully manipulate signal display, by moving the signal both horizontally and vertically, and how to stabilize signal display. In next video we will explain time division function of the oscilloscope, so stay tuned. Please, before you leave, show your appreciation by liking this video, sharing it, leaving a comment, and consider subscribing. Thank you, and see you next time. Bye.